Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Today in the Visionary Chronicles, we're going to talk about a, a word that many of us have gone through this year, many of the businesses that I work with through Liquid Mind, and many of them face challenges. And But many have also found opportunity uh, through what we've gone through here in 2020. And one word that kind of always sticks out to me on these, that those companies, leaders, visionaries, innovators, whoever you want to call or whoever they are, one word that always sticks out with me is perseverance. And anybody can have an idea, but truly the reality of perseverance is executing on that idea to find a commercially viable product in a marketplace where you can sell it to your consumer. And so when I looked at this word perseverance, I found through all the companies that I've worked with with Liquid Mind, leaders that I've talked with over the years, I find many times, this isn't the first challenge that we've gone through, although the first time that we've actually shut down the economy I find that this word perseverance is really a common theme when we come across these challenges. Perseverance is made up of many things, but kind of this dictionary definition, just so you know, perseverance is is steadfast in doing something despite the difficulty in achieving its success. So what that means to me is that this word perseverance really is about barriers put in front of you and naysayers out there saying it can't be done. Your vision is too unrealistic to be commercialized. So I find these leaders that I've worked with that have actually persevered through these challenges, and this year, obviously, with COVID-19, almost all businesses have gotten hit in one way or the other. But I found the ones that have succeeded through this virus and through the COVID-19 pandemic are the ones that have found an opportunity through these disruptions. And this goes beyond a disruption in the marketplace, actually shutting it down, but where they find an actual opportunity to adapt to a new environment. So what I'm talking about today is perseverance, how to adapt to an opportunity and succeed. And many businesses do succeed through this pandemic, believe it or not. It's almost a feed or or not be fed environment that we're in. And those that find a path to succeed through a disruption like this in the marketplace are the ones that succeed long term. And I find that's a very common theme with these these visionaries, these innovators, those that lead these great brands and companies, regardless of the economy, regardless of where we are in regards to the disruption of their product category, the channel of distribution, they find an opportunity and quickly adapt their product, their brand, their channels of distribution, finding a way to create an opportunity in an environment where many people don't see it. And that's why visionaries can cut through the fog in an environment where they don't see the future very clearly. But I can tell you what they do is they don't see it, they create it. And this is one thing that most companies can do and where I've actually seen it executed in the marketplace. And many will kind of turn tail and run. Others will put their head in the sand. And then when they pull their head out, hoping that it, uh, eventually the, the world will have changed for the better and go back to what it was. But I find those that take this head on, the leaders that take it head on, are the ones that inspire a passion inside of the company to say, hey, listen, we are going to adapt to this, what most people would consider a complete disruption in our business, in our economy, and we're going to find an opportunity. So when we say perseverance, we say, what are your dreams? Where do you see opportunities, both near-term and long-term? You know, neither of these is easy to achieve, much less the trying to achieve it in the middle of a pandemic. But what I have seen over the years in companies that I've worked with are that those that see through a fog and set the future themselves are the ones that succeed. And almost every company can do this. And I know there's a lot of risk in not seeing clearly what the future look like looks like. But 
But what I find is that dichotomy is there's also a lot of risk in not doing anything. So there's a way to manage that risk, achieve success, set a plan and a vision that creates passion around your company and your brand for those inside the four walls of what you're looking to achieve. You don't all of a sudden stop being a great brand. It's just a matter of how you're communicating that to your consumer, how you're selling your product in the channels of distribution, and also where you source your product. There's a lot of factors that go into adapting to this environment. And I've seen companies where these leaders are able to cut through that fog and really define a vision and have the wherewithal to not move off that path, but also the flexibility to understand because of the fact that you can't see far enough in the future to adapt to the environment. So this is immensely important when you want to find an opportunity. And I'll give you a couple examples of that is that the, probably the most predominant one I've seen, and we've all seen it, are brands like a Nike and Under Armour or, or any brand, Adidas, Puma, whoever it is, is that they've been able to, because of their brand equity and because of their community and relationships they have directly with their consumers, have been able to adapt from traditionally selling through retailers on brick and mortar to then moving over to the direct-to-consumer business and have succeeded. Now, the reason, and a big part of that, as I'm sure you'll see, is because we have no other way of shopping right now. We're in the middle of the pandemic. We see a light at the end of the tunnel. And the reason that the e-com is doing so well is because we have no other alternative. But I can tell you, therein lies an opportunity. Those that in February and March saw this fog in front of them and were able to cut through that fog with a vision of how are people going to purchase based on the state of where the economy is, also what's happening with how people interact with one another, and their ability to move into commerce the way they used to, meaning that they can go to a Dick's Sporting Goods, they can go to their retail stores, they can go out for dinner. Those that looked at the environment they were in where they adapted to that new channel of distribution were the ones that have succeeded through this pandemic. And as a result, we'll continue to see incremental improvements that were expedited as a result of this pandemic like their D2C business. You get people like a Nike, maybe around eight to 10% of their business pre-pandemic was the e-com or D2C business. Now they're seeing numbers that are ironically probably gonna be in the 30 to 40 to 45% range with double the margin contribution, which is the other big benefit is they can reinvest back into the company and the brand itself increase equity and continue to build relationships with their community and their consumers. So it's a win-win for brands that have adapted to this environment. And I said perseverance and how to adapt to an opportunity to see. That's a great example of virtually anybody could do that. Now it does take an investment. If you are a brand, it's a lot easier than those that are not a brand you become a commodity or your brand with equity that people know who you are and understand the product that you're selling and or are wearing it currently. So when I looked at this, I said again, you know, what are your dreams and aspirations? That doesn't change as a result of a disruption to your business. You have to be prepared for these things to happen. Now, certainly this was another level and I understand that, but I use those examples because these are things that you can do to adapt, finding an opportunity and learning how to succeed through a disruption in your business. And this is an important conversation that I have with the majority of my brands and people that I work with is how to put this thing up on the whiteboard is one thing and have an idea of finding an opportunity, but successfully executing it is where pieces fall apart. It's either because they have a short fuse, their risk tolerance is very short, or they just don't have the investment capital to be able to pursue this opportunity. So I looked at these uh, top five areas that brands or companies can adopt 
to adapt themselves to an opportunity they see in the marketplace and succeed. And there's really five, there's a lot more, but I kind of narrowed this down to the top five so we can get a real definitive discussion around these areas. So this was a big one for me. And, and the reason I came up with this subject as well is because in talking to my companies and questions that I've received in is that, Hey, how do you persevere through this? Hey, I see a great opportunity. Um, but I don't know how to execute against that opportunity without disrupting my current organic business. So I looked at these five areas and I found them, you know, five steps or opportunities to realize that opportunity and persevere through it. So the first one I looked at was stick to your path or stick to your vision and divert only when a road is blocked or you find a better path to achieving your vision. So a lot of times people will say, don't be so stubborn to the point where you fail on your execution. So this is what I'm talking about is that you've set a path, you've set a vision. How are you going to take the steps to executing on that vision and being able to commercialize your product, a new technology, whatever it may be on an opportunity that's different than you're doing today and or it may be something that you're currently doing today that you need to expand. And again, a great example of that is your e-com business. Maybe 5% of your business tomorrow or next year, it may be 30%. So you set a path and a vision to achieving 30% D to C business. How do you do that? So I say stick to your path, divert only when, you, when your road is blocked or you find a better path. So be flexible, but ensure that you have your vision in place and your step process to executing on that and don't move off that path. The second area to succeeding is don't always listen to those who disagree or say no. Visionaries have been told no way more frequently than they have people agree with them. That's because they're the ones that cut through the fog. They're the ones that can see the future. And trying to explain what you're looking to execute on or your plan or your vision to those that don't understand the vision in the first place is very difficult for them to interpret. And as a result, the reflex mechanism is don't risk it. And don't risk it effectively means no. So as long as I'm not saying yes, we have no risk. So don't listen to those who disagree. Now, you can take their opinion into account, but if it doesn't match your vision and the plan that you've established as a leader of that company or the brand, and you've got a clear path and team to execute against that plan, don't listen to those who disagree. It's better to have made a bad decision than no decision at all many times. And But understand, those visionaries, those leaders of these brands that I've worked with and I've been with inside of these companies have a set path and they know how to achieve that success. So make sure that you don't get distracted with these disagreements. Again, you're going to be told no way more than you're going to be told yes. That's when you have the wherewithal to be able to move along your path step by step, gauging progress along the way. The third thing I look at, which many people forget about, and this is more of an entrepreneurial thing, is whether it's a new opportunity or even an incremental opportunity inside of your current brand or company. It's going to take longer than you have planned, number one, and more money than you have allocated. So this is a very simple one, but when I work with my startup companies, this is one thing that when I'm going through the business strategy, the strat plan, the allocation of funding, the long-term, short-term, long-term path to cash flow and requirements for that company to succeed on the opportunity that they've defined is making sure you're realistic. I mean, if all things hit, all cylinders are clicking on your engine, that may be a great plan, but make sure you're realistic in regards to how long this is going to take to succeed. You're going to hit some road bumps along the way. The path to getting there is going to be diverted. So think of it as a point to point as your plan. And the realistic path is you're going to have a switchback. You're going back and forth, eventually achieving to where your destination is. But you're going to have many barriers thrown up along the way, whether they be financial or just commercialization barriers, whatever it may be. Understand it's going to take longer than you think and more money than you have allocated or that you've planned. So persevere, but be realistic. Number four is be creative in your thinking, you know, remain flexible, 
but be persistent. And I say creative in your thinking could be anything. I'm not talking about just product, which is very important. A great idea, a product, a vision. What I'm saying, being creative in everything that you do is how you allocate resources, how you allocate money, how you plan out the commercialization of your product that may need to be more expedited than you had before. A great example is that if you're in a six month cycle on release of product, when you find an opportunity in a disruptive market like this we're in right now with COVID, you may have to condense your commercialization process. So who's going to manage that process and who's going to define it? It has to come from the top and it has to be defined very clearly. So being creative in all that you do. And the fifth thing I say is, and probably what I found in, in running my company and, and selling it eventually to a PE firm is you got to have thick skin. If you're a leader and a visionary of a company, and this kind of goes back to the yes versus no ratio, um, you need to make sure that you have thick skin. I always say when people would come in and talk with me when I was running my company, you need to have skin as thick as an elephant. You're going to get poked and prodded a lot, turned down a lot, slice, cut, run into barriers, whatever it may be. You got to have tough skin and you got to stick to your path. Ensure that you have that plan in place so you can set that vision that could be translated to the team underneath you and have a great team behind you with a great vision that can be executed realistically and have progress steps along the way. So defining this opportunity is easy. Executing the plan is where it becomes difficult. So make sure that you have thick skin when you're executing this plan. You know, in these times, opportunities enter into a, what I call this digital reality. And being able to adapt to this digital conversion in our marketplace is crucially important to your success. And I say that because whether it be e-com, D2C, I don't care what it is, service providers, SaaS, FinTech, whatever it may be, everything is converting to digital, including, by the way, how consumers shop. Once they've had a great experience with an Amazon, with the brands that, that I work with, as well as your brand or company, if you are doing e-com, ensuring that they have a great experience is going to be key to your success as well. But being able to adapt to the environments that we're in, not panicking, not putting your head in the sand and hoping it changes by the time you come out, but proactively finding an opportunity, setting a vision, and being able to execute on that division in these times is where you want to be able to be, whether it's through this COVID or there's going to be another one. We had financial disruption. COVID disruption, and we're going to have another one in the future. So make sure that you're prepared. And this is a case of when I look at it and I work with the companies, I say this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to define yourself in the marketplace. It's going to be the future. So make sure that you do that. Define your vision, have a plan, support your team, persevere through these barriers, and you will succeed. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity that right now seems like the biggest disruption you've ever had in your business or your life. But those that find the opportunity, adapt to this opportunity, define vision, stay on that path and execute with their team are going to succeed. would like to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles today. I really appreciate your time and hopefully you've enjoyed the subjects that we talk about each week here on the Visionary Chronicles. And we feel it's very important. We understand that there's professional needs and support you need with your companies and with your brands, but we also appreciate the fact that you've got some personal needs. As leaders of companies and brands, there are many things that you have to deal with, and we wanna make sure that we're addressing those as well. If you like what you hear, we would really appreciate subscribing to the Visionary Chronicles are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, and Podbean. So we would really appreciate if you'd subscribe and, and look forward to bringing additional episodes to you each week. So again, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Look forward to the next podcast.